soon, very, very soon, 60 years of Bond, James Bond. So thanks to our friends from uh, Vřečana Času, big shout out to them. Vřečana Času is a company that trades uh, secondhand new watches pretty much all of the brands from, uh, I would say, downtown Warsaw. Many, many thanks to them for gathering all of these pieces. We have 12 beautiful, mostly limited edition pieces. Only one of them actually took part in the movie. But uh, we have a rare occasion of uh, going through all of them, comparing, uh, trying to find out some distinctions, some small details, uh, kind of limitations, and uh, talk a bit about all of these uh, beautiful, beautiful pieces made by Omega. Because, uh, as most of you know, since 1995, where GoldenEye was released with Pierce Brosnan, Omega went into very close cooperation with the 007 Bond franchise. And every watch since 1995, since GoldenEye, is an Omega. Some of them were standard watches that you could actually buy and there were no distinctions for 007. But many of them, as you can see right here, were specially made for collectors, 007 fans, all those who just love James Bond and want to have something connected to this fictional but very nice character. First off is the watch released to commemorate 40th anniversary of Bond movies and that was um, during the Die Another Day release, so in 2002. The watch is uh, entirely based on original first James Bond watch, which was actually Quartz uh, movement the first one worn by Pierce Brosnan. So the general look, general aesthetics and design is the same. So the same 41 millimeter case, aluminum bezel, blue bezel, blue dial. But then when we get into the dial and some details on it, we have some distinctions for uh, this particular limited edition uh, watch, limited edition to 10,007 pieces. So the dial has a pattern made of 007 and the gun engravings, uh, repeated engravings, and it's uh, 007. And then at six o'clock, you have also an applied polished 007 logo. This time, you don't, uh, there is no quartz movement anymore. This is automatic movement, Omega Caliber 1120, which is a pre-coaxial, ETA-based, fully automatic, with the rotor. You have a uh, date at three o'clock, and some additional James Bond markings on the other side. So you will have 007 engraving on the clasp. And 007 on the case back, plus 40 years James Bond limited series. Unlike on most of the limited edition watches, you have a limitation number and the total number of watches released on the case back. 41 millimeters, still on a thin side, pre-coaxial as I said. Still aluminum bezel. The famous helium escape valve. Whenever somebody complains about escape valve, please remember, this is just the part of the design, part of the heritage, no matter if it's useful, non-useful, I don't care, Omega doesn't care, this is just the part of the design and deal with it. So the other two uh, were released during the Casino Royale, which was the first uh, movie with Daniel Craig. This one is still, I would say, 100% based on the original one that was the first one in Omega movies, the first quartz one, worn by P Pierce Brosnan, so still 41 millimeters, alumin <coughs> aluminum bezel, and uh, totally the same aesthetics of uh, original S&P 300. The distinctive features on this limited editions are the dial, that clearly show the characteristic James Bond inside of the gun barrel. 
then uh, if you uh, take a close look at the counterbalance of the seconds hand you see a very nice shiny polished 007 logo right here This is also the first one where Omega logo and name is applied and polished and nicely shining. So when you look at the different angles of the light, it shines very, very beautifully. It is important to mention that this is also the first movement of the Bond watches with uh, coaxial escapement. So this is a modified ETA movement that uh, after in including coaxial escapement Omega named 2500. That was a very popular workhorse on many Omega watches. The bezel is still aluminum. The case is still very thin. Helium escape valve, as I said before, this is the part of the design and we have to live with it. The case back clear big markings of the James Bond franchise. Three hundred meters water resistance, coaxial, first time you can see that, coaxial chronometer and limitation number, limitation to ten thousand and seven pieces. The clasp similar to the previous one with the 007 marking and wearability on my MT 18 centimeter wrist. Very, very nice, very comfortable. So that was the SMP 300 and that one will we will see again many many more times this is the most common one and the most often used in Omega movies but also we have the first instant instance of Omega's top tier diver which is Seamaster Planet Ocean this one comes in a 45 and a half millimeter case a very very similar one was actually in the movie i mean it looks on the movie it looks uh, the same on the same rubber strap, uh, strap it looks the same but obviously it did not have the signs that would actually uh, that we, you, you could see from the far distance that this is the james bond yeah so james bond can, james bond cannot show everyone that he's a 007 here since this is a limited edition it's a fun edition you have a 007 orange counterbalance and orange tip of the seconds hand. Now in the video you can clearly see the dial much better because this is also the watch that has a very very good Omega anti-reflective coating from both sides so it is pretty hard to get any light reflections and uh, the visibility of the dial is second to none. Then since we have a white gold indexes and the hands Rhodium plated, very nicely polished, the light plays with indexes and broad arrow hands incredibly. This is a beautiful watch. This is uh, from the time where Planet Ocean was pretty thin. There was a 42 millimeter case, for example, on the standard Planet Oceans. Uh, I think that was one of the best designs in the history of Planet Ocean. Hopefully this year, the new one will be released. We'll see. For now we have just an ultra deep, but Everybody's waiting for the new release of a standard Planet Ocean. Then, at the case back, you've got Casino Royale, Planet Ocean Limited Series, one of 5,007 pieces released on a very high quality rubber strap with standard tank baffle, buckle, and even though this is 45 and a half millimeter water, you can see that on my, I would say, medium sized 18 centimeters wrist, it was very, very well. The thickness is correct.
So that's Casino Royale. Now we're coming to the year of 2008, release of Quantum of Solace. In my humble opinion, the strangest and the most not understood movies of all James Bond's. To be honest, I watched it probably three or four times. I still don't get it, what it's all about. Um, again, we have the SMP 300 and the Planet Ocean. Uh, now on the SMP 300, here we are already getting into the aesthetics still. It is still uh, aesthetics of uh, the original Quartz watch, but this time we have a black dial, nothing dis distinctive on the dial, but we already have enamel, very shiny, you actually have a mirror reflections on this enamel dial. And the only James Bond indication here is again the counterbalance of the second's hand, which this time is red 007, and also red tip of the second hand. Since on the previous SP 300, Omega already gave us an applied logo, so they continue with the applied logo. It shines nicely in different light angles. Steel aluminum bezel insert. As you see, it's the same as aesthetics of the previous ones. Same markings on uh, the clasp. And obviously, Omega 007 distinction at the back of the watch. Then limitation number out of, again, 10,007 released. James Bond collector's piece. I'll throw it on my wrist. I think that was that 41 millimeters was a very, very good size for uh, S&P 300, as you know, now it's 42 millimeters, a bit thicker. It's still okay, but I know that Omega, a lot of Omega lovers uh, prefer the previous size. That's disputable, and just depending on your preference. Then we've got a real beauty, again, the higher tier of Omega Divers, which is Planet Ocean, as it was on, on, uh, on the previous one, on uh, Casino Royale. We are still at uh, Quantum of Solace movie. Now uh, I would like my cameraman to come a bit closer because I want to show you something and I hope this will be visible. So uh, here, right here, at some light angles, you can see that Quantum of Solace, yeah, you can see now, is engraved on the glass quantum of solace this is exactly in the way it was seen in the movie and then also take a close look at the dial because the pattern of the dial reflects the pattern of the sign of the handle of the pistol that was used by james james bond so whenever you handle the pistol you handle it like this and this is the side of that pistol handle it's exactly the same, it was actually Walter Pistol. Other than that, it's a typical planet ocean aesthetics, planet ocean of that time. So if you compare it to the one from Casino Royale, it really is the same aesthetics, but the pattern here on this dial makes a big difference. Here on the on the second hand, we do not have any 007 uh, counterbalance, it's a very standard seconds hand. And again, it's a white gold uh, hands and white gold indexes, rodium plated. So the shine and the reflection of the dial is absolutely stunning, especially when you have the outside anti-reflection coating. Obviously there's the one also inside. So I have a anti-reflection coating on both sides of the glass. And that is why you Sometimes you can you cannot see the glass. You you think that this watch is broken and, and nobody put the glass in. Zero zero seven marking on the clasp. This time not on the professional, but just on the other side of the clasp. And 
and uh, 007 marking on the case back plus limitation number out of 5007 released. Like every planet ocean, this one is uh, 600 meters water resistance, so twice more than the SMP 300. And again, as part of almost every Omega's diver, part of the aesthetics, part of the, of the design is the helium escape valve. Apparently the new Ultra Deep is the first one without this feature. So I'll throw it on my wrist again. 45 and a half millimeters, so pretty big one in the specification, but as you can see, it works very, very well. The thickness is still pretty good, much better than uh, of the current Planet Oceans. It's not very heavy, even though it's a lot of steel, a lot of metal, but really the shine on the indexes and uh, if I can have my cameraman over here. So now look, look at the shine, look how the light reflects on the indexes and hence absolutely stunning. Now we are moving another four years forward to 2012 and half a century of James Bond and these two watches have nothing to do with any of James Bond movies. They were released purely thanks, put purely to celebrate 50th anniversary of James Bond franchise. And this was actually the only time when Omega released the masculine, or I would say unisex version of SMP 300, because this one is worn by uh, both genders. And also the small version, not 41, but 36 and a quarter millimeter. That is actually dedicated to women or men with very, very small wrists. Sometimes that happens. But uh, the aesthetics of the watch um, is 99% the same. I will tell you later where the main difference is. Then also we are resembling a little bit the watch that was released for the 40th anniversary. So let's start from the dial. Here we had a 007 engraving. So we have on these two watches. So the whole dial has the 007 pattern. But we also entered ceramic era of uh, Omega watches. So we've got both the ceramic and zirconium dioxide dial and the bezel insert. So this is already very, very hard material, scratch resistant and very shiny because uh, the dial is always polished. So you see the reflection of the light on the dial very, very nicely. We already have the anti-reflective uh, coating outside. So whenever you see the reflection, any reflection, the light, the lamps that we have over here, it's not on the glass, it is on the dial. So 007, engraving on the dial. Uh, then when you look at the bezel, the 50 is in different colors. So everything is, a, is a, I think it's a liquid metal. And then you have red painted 50 to commemorate 50th anniversary of James Bond movie. It's the same here on the female watch. And now a very, very important detail on the smaller version. Hope we can get that on the camera. As you know, James Bond is 007. Obviously, we set the date for the 7th, but if you look at the 7 o'clock, it is not any standard index, but it's actually a diamond. It's obviously a big bow to the women, big, uh, to include the diamond in the watch. And then when you have all the documentation of the watch, you will have the card that describes the diamond, all of the type of uh, polishing and uh, purity and weighting carats. But this is a very, very nice small detail on the female version. Now, 
the movement here is a slight modification of 2500 movement. This one is called 2507. The modification is to work well at the back of the watch with the case. So the golden part, the gold color part that you see inside is the middle of the rotor and this one rotates. So, okay, I'll try to rotate the, uh, the watch. Maybe the cameraman can rotate the camera together with me. <laughs> so you will see how the rotor rotates. Okay, I'll try to do this. Let's have a zoom out. So this is the only modification of the of the movement, nothing uh, special, but whenever Omega makes a slight modification of the movement, whether it's a golden bridge instead of a standard stainless steel, or we get rid of the date, or we put a small second instead of the star, star standard second, then the uh, number of the movement changes slightly, just to have a clear distinction that it's a little modification of the standard movement in the watch. Uh, there is no 0007 marking on the clasp, so the clasp looks to be just a standard SMP300 clasp of that period, which was 41 millimeter ceramic. Let's throw it on the wrist. So still 41 millimeter. Applied logo. No diamond on the men's version of the watch. 50th anniversary in red on the bezel. Red Seamaster, red tip of the seconds hand. No 007 on counterbalance as we had on some other watches. But there is a lot of 007 on this one. And I'll put the women's watch anyway. Why not? So uh, again, 18 centimeters wrist, if any of you, our lady viewers, have 18 centimeter wrists, that happens as well. This is how it will look like. 36.25 millimeters of the diameter on this one. Okay, now we have them both side by side. So as you can see, this uh, 007 pattern on the dial looks to be a thing on anniversary watches. This year we have 60th, 60th anniversary, so who knows? <laughs> Maybe it's going to happen again. I hope I'm not spoiling Omega's design, but this is just something that came to, to our mind, actually our cameraman. So if that happens, this will be his fault. He's the one to be sued. Uh, limitations on these watches are different. This one is uh, 11,007. So I think Omega, after big success of previous watches, where mostly it was 10,007 or 5,007 for Planet Oceans. So probably they realized that it's going to be a pretty good sales. So they put another 1,000 of pieces on this one, but this one is quite special because it's just 3,007 pieces. I think it's obvious, yeah, the feminine, uh, feminine clientele is not as big as the masculine one. So 3,007, 11,007 on this one. Still 2012. This one is not an anniversary watch, like the previous one, this one is released together with Skyfall. I am uh, not Adele, so I'm not going to sing that beautiful song, but the watch itself is beautiful. It's, uh, I would say, intermediate iteration of Planet Ocean, or the one that was a little bit before uh, the one that we have right now, in excellent 42 millimeter case. Nowadays, you have mostly 43 and a half or 40, uh, 45 and a half, but this 42 millimeter was just fantastic. I think 39.5, that is also available is a little bit too small and proportions are not there. This one was absolutely fantastic. Um, here we also have the first in-house movement that was 8500. It was 
many people say it was a big modification of previous ETA, but Omega first time announces it as an as a in-house movement. Um, and uh, here we have uh, the brick pattern on the dial. To be completely honest with you, I am not sure, or but I don't know if it was going to mean anything. If somebody can tell me, you can put it in the in the in the comments. Looks nice. It's matte, uh, as is the bezel insert. So uh, as you know, here we entered ceramic era, and most of the diver watches of Omega have ceramic bezel, which is shiny, which is fully polished. This one is not. This one is matte with liquid metal inside. Again, white gold indexes and the hands on Planet Ocean. Not on SMP, but on Planet Ocean, they are white gold, rhodium plated. So the shine is completely different. Maybe I can work with my cameraman and try to show you the shine. Let's zoom out a bit. So now let's work on the shine. The reflection of the light, especially if you're outside and the sun rays reflect these indexes and hands it's absolutely stunning also the logo of course but applied logo is a feature of planet ocean then on the seven o'clock a distinct clear 007 marking now this one was also worn in the movie but obviously in the standard version uh, james bond cannot wear the watch that screams from far distance i am james bond i'm 007 so uh, this is just for the movie lovers but obviously in the movie that needs to be as real as possible even though it's far from being real you cannot have a distinct 007 marking let's throw it on the wrist and as i said this is Probably the best size and aspect ratio of Planet Ocean up till now. I have a big problem whether the best one is this one or the previous one. Definitely I'm not a big fan of the latest version. Also first time on uh, Bond Limited watches we have uh, see-through case back, display case back with 8507. So 07 is again, this is 8500. This is purely 8500, but this 07 means that there is a slight modification and the modification is the skyfall marking on the rotor. There's no mechanical change in respect to standard 8500, but whenever, as I said on the previous watch, whenever there is a little, little, tiny, little modification, even the marking on the on the movement, then Omega already makes it a distinct reference. And this one, as previous Planet Oceans, is limited to 5,007 pieces. We've got 007 again on the clasp. This is still a good 20 millimeter between the lugs and the nice taper down to 16 millimeters. And again, on the wrist, it's absolutely lovely. Okay, so next pair of watches is something different to what we used to have because either we had SP 300 or we had a pair of SP 300 and Planet Ocean. This time, none of above. First off, the Aquaterra 41 millimeter, uh, 41 and a half to be precise, the, the, the previous version, not the one that we have right now. Aquaterra on 8500 uh, movement. I'll come back to the movement. Later on, first I'll tell you some special features of this watch that was released for the Spectre movie. So, first of all, you distinctly see uh, the yellow color, yellow color which you have on the second's hand and the second's marking out on outside ring of the of the dial. But then the ceramic dial, and I'll again try to work together with my cameraman to show you. You have a nicely engraved pattern of Bond family coat of arms. All right. So each and single one of these is a coat of arms of Bond family. And this is also on the tip of the second hand. So now you can see it in proper orientation. Uh, let's 
try to find focus. Okay, we have focus now. And this is the coat of arms of Bond and family. Then, since this is a in-house movement, uh, one of the first that is, for example, fully resistant to magnetics, over 5,000 Gauss, plus uh, the special and the biggest limitations of all, which is 15,007, you have here 15,007 Gauss. So this marking has two meanings. First of all, to show you how magnetic, how resistant to magnetics this watch is, but also to show you the limitation number of the watch, 15,007. Now, on the 50th anniversary watch, which was this one, I showed you the case back, which only had a little hole inside, like in, inside of the gun, that was showing inside the golden part of the rotor, and that was a 8507 caliber. We have the same 8507 caliber in the Aquaterra, but here we have a fully shown movement through the display case back, so you can see all of the movement and the beautiful rotor that totally reflects the symbol of Bond, actually the symbol of Bond that you see at the beginning of every movie, huh? the one that you see even over here. And this is why the caliber has a different number, 8507, because the movement is slightly modified. This one is absolute beauty. I'm a big fan of display case back, so I wish it was also the same on this, but you know, this one also has its own taste showing just the middle of the rotor. So other than that, no special markings at the case back, just a limited edition. Uh, the number of the watch, which of 15,007 pieces it is, and 15,007 Gauss. Normally, these watches are advertised as 15,000 Gauss, which is actually even resistant to MRI. The date is still on, th on three o'clock. And we have a typical Aquaterra bracelet that is polished inside and brushed outside. 41 and a half millimeters, as I said before broad arrow, arrow minute hand just to have a little distinction from the planet ocean that has both minute and hour hand with an arrow at the tip applied logo like on all aquaterras now james bond actually wore one iterations of these watches but it was a very standard one as i said on a previous watch james bond cannot cannot shout out in the movie it cannot be seen from outside ah, i'm james bond this is my james bond watch he could wear only a standard watch that you can buy. So he was wearing a blue version with the vertical tick striations. But this is just for the collectors and James Bond fans. Now, next one is the only one in the collection that we are showing today, is the only one that was actually in the movie. And it was in the movie in exactly this configuration, which is on NATO strap. This is a Seamaster 300. It's not Seamaster Professional like this one. This is Seamaster 300, the heritage version. This one has a lollipop hand. Apparently, Omega this year came back with uh, the new version of Seamaster that brings back the lollipop hand because the previous version had just a standard arrow second cent. So here we had a lollipop that was just for the Spectre limited edition Bond version. Uh, it has a sandwich dial, sandwich step dial, so in a certain light, and I'll try to work again with my friend with the camera. Uh, so when you look at the indexes, they are, now we can see it, they are deeper than the actual dial. Something what Panaristi love, all right? So the indexes of every five minutes are deeper behind the dial. 
There is a few watches nowadays that you can buy with this feature. Uh, obviously, all of the Seamaster 300s, but also the recent uh, release of uh, Heritage Speedmaster 57. So the black dial version has the same feature, which is the sandwich step dial. Ceramic insert in the bezel. This one, as I remember, was used by James Bond as a bomb trigger. Now we do not have anti-reflective coating outside, and that can, can be clearly visible. It is also not available on the current version of Seamaster 300, but this is what Omega claims to be like a heritage style. So on all of the heritage watches, you have anti-reflective coating, coating only on, on the inside. Even the latest Bond watch, uh, the Titanium one, did not have any coating outside, all right? Here we have a very standard 8400 movement, which is again a modification of 8500 we were talking about before. The modification is that there is no date. So no date, that is why they changed the number from 8500 to 8400. Mechanically, it's the same, it's the same watch. I'll try to take off the, the strap. Ah, okay, now on the strap, you should see exactly here. On the keeper, you see the 007 sign. And this is the movement through the display case back. If you are not NATO strap fan, as I am, I actually hate NATO straps. Uh, this watch was uh, sold uh, in a set with uh, the bracelet. So we can also put the bracelet on the watch. The bracelet is fully brushed. Now there is a distinction. This is a fully brushed bracelet. Aquaterra has an inside links polished so if we can compare here you can see that inside looking is polished and then on the recent versions of of uh, Seamaster 300 you have a very similar bracelet but the outside links are polished So coming back to, to this NATO strap, it's uh, not also standard like most of Omega NATO straps, which, which are, by the way, very high quality. So all of the uh, minder, all, all of the keepers are brushed. Also the tank buckle, buckle is brushed and you have this user 7 sign on one of the keepers. And Omega logo on the other side. At the case back, there is a Spectre marking. anti-magnetic 15,000 gauss. These were the first movement to be so anti-magnetic. I would rather say amagnetic. And limitation number, which is one out of 7,007 and 7,000. So we have the first seven, which is for the thousand is just a standard, standard font, but the fonts of 007 are obviously of James Bond franchise. Throw it on the wrist. Mm -hmm. So this is on my wrist. Something what I didn't mention before is Omega logo that is bigger than the normal. Actually, this one shouts out, I'm Omega. I'm the Bond watch. Probably everybody remembers the famous scene from one of the movies where beautiful ladies looking at James Bond's wrist asking Rolex? No, Omega. Actually, correct, he says typical English, Omega. On the side. I can at least simulate how it would look with the bracelet. Not. Next one, year 2017, a famous commander's watch. It has nothing to do with any new James Bond movie, nothing to do with any potential anniversary. It is just the tribute to the fact that Bond was uh, part of uh, the Royal Navy 
at the rank of Admiral, as far as I know. And it's called the Commander's Watch. It is in the standard 41 millimeter S&P 300 case, which is the previous version. It has the zirconium dioxide, which is a ceramic, shiny, polished dial with ZRO2 markings uh, just uh, under the indexes over the six o'clock mark. You have, again, the 007 uh, counterbalance on the seconds hand, red second, seconds hand, blue indexes and uh, hands, and that you can see only in certain lighting, in certain lighting that turns into really popping blue. Blue insert of the bezel, again ceramic, with a red part on the first 15 minutes. Limitation to 7,007 pieces. And this is, as you can see on the NATO strap, there's nothing special, no 007 markings on the NATO strap, as it was on uh, the Seamaster, but this is a special strap that was uh, made only and solely for this uh, watch. You, you cannot purchase it like you can with many other different um, designs of NATO on the Omega. This was specifically made for this watch and this one only. Now again, a see-through back uh, with a slight modification on the rotor. That is why the caliber is called not 2500, but 2507. The modification, as you can see, is that the rotor reflects the insignia, insignia of Admiral that the Admiral usually has on the cuff of the suit. So whenever you have a, you see a Navy officer walking through the street or, I don't know, going to his ship, you will see that he has this type of markings, this type of insignia on his cuff. So you will see three stripes and the third one is with a loop. So that is, I think, the Admiral distinction. And then a limitation of 7,000 and you can see which number out of the 7,007 this watch is. Now I'll try to throw it on my wrist. Wrist shot. Small simulation with the bracelet. So, Commander's Watch. So this is the this is the version that was uh, most common and I would say obtainable, as I said before, in seven thousand and seven pieces of limitation. But there were also two versions that were very very hard to get or maybe even impossible to get one of them looked exactly the same because it was made out of white gold so it's really very difficult from from far distance to distinguish white gold and stainless steel and that white gold was one of piece only one piece that was made especially made for christie's uh auction uh and it was sold uh, for some probably crazy money to be honest i didn't check but Obviously, you can Google that. The other one was exactly looking the same, only the case was made out of yellow gold, and that watch was limited to seven pieces. Uh, so also not obtainable, and probably if somebody wants to sell it, the price would go skyrocketed. Yeah, so last but not least, that must have been said, of course. Last but not least, uh, the most recent iteration of S&P 300, not a very standard one, but it is the most recent iteration in the most recent 42 millimeter case. This one was released in commemoration of uh, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, actually on the 50th anniversary. And there are some small details concerning this 50th anniversary. So as I said, this is a standard 
most contemporary 42 millimeter case. The, the case is made out of stainless steel, but indexes and hands are made of yellow gold. And then also on the side of the watch, you will see a yellow gold, yellow gold plate that tells you the limitation of this particular watch. So you will have your own number slash the total number of watches, which is 7,007. And of course, whenever you have a 007 ending on the number, this 007 will be in James Bond font. So there is no limitation number on the case back or on the dial that, for example, you had on Aqua Terra. Uh, ceramic dial, ceramic bezel, nothing special going on here, apart from the fact that, first of all, on the dial, you have, again, the characteristic James Bond thread that you see inside of the gun. And uh, it is a very special dial because not only it is shiny and it's on, at some light angles it looks polished, but it is also sunbrushed. So there is a combination of sunbrushing and sunbrushing is not straight. Sunbrushing is made out of little arcs. The arcs have a little bit uh, bigger diameter than the arc of the thread of the gun. But this is a combination again the thread that you can clearly see and the sun brushing which you can see and I'll try to work with my camera again okay so here you think that the watch is totally polished and mirror polished actually but if you look now you clearly see how the sun plays on the sun brushing all right then as I said, yellow gold hands and indexes. 12 o'clock is an inside of Bond family coat of arms. We had coat of arms on the Aqua Terra, and here you have an inside of the coat of arms of James Bond. Date window at six o'clock. Looks to be nothing special about the date, apart from the seventh day of the month, which I'm going to show you right now. So, fourth, fifth, sixth, and attention, seventh. So the seven is a 007 font. So obviously every owner of this watch waits for this special particular day of every month. Then something what will be very, very hard to see, but a little detail connected to the 50th anniversary of the movie on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Inside 10 o'clock index, in the loom, you will see number 50. And we'll try to do our best Show that maybe now. I think yeah, I think you can see it now. In the meantime, you can see how beautifully the light plays with this dial. It's so much going on on that one. Yeah, now you can see the fifty. The watch uh, comes uh, in a set with the standard S&P 300 bracelet that I'm coming back to and at the back. Okay, this one is on the rubber strap. Nowadays, apparently, so uh, when the watch was released, there was the rubber strap with this tank buckle. If you don't like this tank buckle, which I have to say, uh, it's very safe. For, the di for diving, it's very safe. You know, you have these curves and when you fasten it, there is no way it will unfasten, but it's quite difficult to actually fasten it and unfasten. If you don't like that, if you are a typical desk, dive, desk diver, like 99% of users of S&P, you can actually now buy the deployment class version of these rubber straps. So it's a different construction of the strap. It will have round holes here instead of square, 
This part is completely different. You don't have the, 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 the minders, you don't have the keepers. And then you can pull, put the ploy and clasp that actually hides this part of the strap underneath and you fasten and, unf and unfasten the strap with just one single move. It's very, very safe to put it on or put it off. Uh, okay, uh, this was a small digression. Um, it's uh, 8800 movement with a single barrel, a quick date change, and you have the coat of arms of Bond family on the on the display case back, which in my humble opinion was a bit strange move. Uh, there are a few Omega watches that have a beautiful open case back and then there's something is printed that covers the, the, the movement, like the Tokyo, for example, limited edition. Uh, some people like it, some people, some people don't. I don't. I can't see the movement, but okay, it's part of the design. Um, here you also have the Nyad lock. Nyad lock is uh, Omega patented way of closing the display, uh, the, the, the case back. So no matter how you close it, it will always close at the same position. So all of these signs, all of the markings will be always in the same position after closing the watch. Nothing special here at the back. It's just limited edition, but the limitation number is on the sign, as I said before, Diver 300, Nyad log, 300 meters of water, water resistance. And that was the watch that was pretty easy to buy in the stores. That was really not, not so unobtainable. You could actually purchase it. There was no problem. I had one as well. But now we will come to something very, very special, which was a bit harder to get and much, much more expensive. I'll move this one to the side. And I'll come with a much bigger suitcase. easy okay now in the box if we can come back most famous suitcase since 1897 globetrotter omega 007 limited edition the thread of the gun fantastic when it comes to packaging omega makes no shortcuts at all this is a piano polished box with the gold Omega markings and voila. So this is a set where both watches look very similar to this one. Actually, this one looks exactly the same, but it's not. So now when I put them side by side, you can clearly see that the one from the set is a no date version. Here we have this beautiful date with a seven made out of James Bond font. Here there is no date, which is comfortable for many. Even if the watch is stopped, you just put it on, set the time, and you don't worry about the date. Other than that, all of the character characteristics are exactly the same. Stainless steel, a case, yellow gold, the hands and indexes, 50 on the 10 o'clock, um, same dial, which is zirconium dioxide, which is polished and sunbrushed and engraved with thread of the gun. So apart from no date on the watch which is in the set, everything else is the same. So now I will comp compare to the second watch from the set, which is also no date. And the only but big difference is the case. Here the case is fully yellow gold. Here we have stainless steel and liquid metal inside. Here we have gold and gold indexes in the bezel and that one is significantly heavier than the one on the left on the left obviously because of the material that is used gold is very very heavy material so then you also have a gold buckle gold case back the rotor of the watch is also made of gold but this time is uh, rose gold which Omega calls, as I remember, Sedna Gold. Again, in my opinion, stupid Bond coat of arms that covers the beautiful um, movement. Other than that, everything the same, limited edition, but there is no Nyad log on the gold version. Maybe Omega didn't want to make it too complicated because it's a quite a complicated thread to make it uh, Nyad. This one is not Nyad log.
in the set in the set there is stainless steel bracelet that you can put obviously on the stainless steel watch it will not work nicely with this one uh, I think there is no fully gold bracelet for SMP 300 there is also only a two-tone and there is a two-tone version of this gold there is generally no fully gold version of this watch that is why probably Omega didn't put a golden version of the bracelet uh, so the bracelet is only one and it's stainless steel so it will work with the watch on the left but both watches also have uh, NATO straps in NATO this one obviously with stainless steel buckle and stainless steel, stainless steel keepers this one with real yellow gold buckle and keepers but the, the pattern of the NATO is exactly the same from the Seamaster 300 of the Switch Then you also have travel case for each of them. So when you travel, you can just take this out and put your watch for the night inside or whenever you don't feel comfortable to wear it on the wrist. Loop with exactly the same design like the bezel of the watch. and 007 on the side. The full set was limited to 257 pieces. Now coming back to the cases, also nice details that even the stitching, if you look at the stitching, the stitching here is gold, just to work with this watch. And this one is standard grey that works well with stainless steel. So now for the dessert, the last side on all of the 12 pieces and we've got also the full packaging for all of them. These are all of the boxes and I'll try to come through them one by one. The first watch starts to be a bit more sophisticated as you can see some of the boxes come with extra accessories like here we've got the loop this is obviously the Aquaterra so you can see that the pattern on the box reflects the pattern on the dial of Aquaterra and then again we have this is surely Planet Ocean with brick dial, quantum of solace. So we're starting to have boxes that actually have the name of the movie that was released with Spectre, again coming with the loop, an extra bracelet, 50 years of James Bond. This is the Commander's one. Recent pre no time to die version. Once again, shout out to Vrechano Chasu. Thank you for this opportunity of having all these watches. I hope you guys enjoyed. And that's it.